you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. What's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. We're going to be down in San Diego in just a couple of weeks, uh, the fourth, or I'm sorry, the third through the sixth at Hotel Del Coronado. We're going to be podcasting live from the Innovations and Recovery Conference. And uh, that uh, that conference is uh, put on by Foundations Recovery Network, one of the sponsors of the show. And we just want to say thanks to them, obviously for hosting the event, but also for having us come down and hang out, meet some good people, learn some new things about the recovery industry and uh, talk, uh, talk on some podcasting. So we're going to be live doing that from, uh, let's see, it's going to be nine, nine a.m. Pacific time to 12 noon on uh, the third and the fourth. So if you want to log into that, you can go to that and in the right hand uh, panel there, there'll be a button you can click on. You can get the live player uh, to log in. There's a live chat. You can sit in there. You can ask questions, make comments, and uh, you can meet some cool people and uh, contribute your opinion, your thoughts, and you can sit in and listen also. So if you want any more information about the event itself, go to foundationsevents.com slash innovations in recovery. Another tool that I like to use, Transitions Daily. It's a daily AA email and it's delivered right to my inbox. Uh, It's really a great way to start my day. I love it. It takes me just a few minutes to read and get through and it's really one of my favorite tools to help get my day started. If you want to get that email uh, directly to your inbox, you can go to dailyaaemails.com and there's more information on the site. We got a great guest uh, for you today and we're going to get to her in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about a new treatment called DXRX. So DXRX provides access to alcohol treatment specialists. It's safe medication and ongoing monitoring for people who want to stop or reduce their drinking. And it's all done through a simple phone app. Uh, Here's what happens on your first appointment. Before you start the program, you'll meet with the physician who's a specialist in addiction and they'll discuss your goals for drinking excuse me, your health history, any concerns your physician or any concerns you might have. And then the physician will create a personalized care plan uh, for you. And and prior to this, you can also go and you can take a test and the test will assess your drinking, kind of assess where you're at. Um, Are you drinking too much? Are you um, obviously if you're blacking out and you're not remembering things, you're probably drinking too much, but you know, you never know. Take the test, find out. Uh, after you do that, you'll meet with the physician. Then you can monitor your progress once you got started through the um, through the breathalyzer and the DXRX mobile app. And then the physician will also recommend safe, effective, non-habit forming medicine that'll help you ease the alcohol cravings. Um, if you want more information about DXRX, go to thatsoberguide.com and you'll see the DXRX logo, Stronger Than Alcohol. You can click on that and get started today. All right. We're going to jump right into today's show, and today's guest is Amanda Nelson. Um, Amanda is a great contributor to to the Sober Guy community, uh, to the Recovery Elevator community, to the Share Podcast community. I mean, all all involved, all of us homies who've kind of uh, bonded together in this uh, this fight against addiction and and, uh, alcoholism and just living a better lifestyle. Uh, She's been a great part of that. She has her own platform now, too, Patched, Patched Wangs. Is that right, Amanda? That's right. Yes. Patched wings. Patched wings. I said it correctly. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about her real quick and then, and then we'll jump right in, even though I kind of introduced you already, Amanda. So you've been clean and sober for a year and a half, and that was after a 17-year drug and alcohol addiction. Um, she's had numerous uh, run-ins with the law, also tried rehab with no success. 
Uh, nothing worked until she packed up and moved to another state. And uh, during her first year of sobriety, she faced many adversities, car repossession, eviction, deaths in the family, um, but was still able to remain sober. Uh, she's now learning how to connect mind, body, and soul every day to live a healthy, vibrant life. And uh, Amanda's on a mission to stop addiction and show everyone that they can be happy. And I love that last line because, um, man, how many of us out there, I know myself, struggle sometimes with just trying to be happy. And it sounds kind of silly. Like, why wouldn't we be happy we're alive? You know what I mean? Like, we get to wake up every day. But, man, like, sometimes that little enemy can get the best of us. And so uh, I, I love that that's kind of like one of your main focal points of your mission. Like, let's just be positive. Um, you have a lot of energy, and you express that in the videos that you do and your comments. And I love it. So thank you for being on the show today. It's great to have you. I'm honored to be here. I appreciate you allowing <laughs> me the opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. So what's up? Uh, how... How, uh, how have things been? Uh, let's talk a little bit about, about you. Um, uh, what, what have you been up to? You got patched wings. I know, uh, and we'll, I'm sure we're going to dive into this a little bit. One of the best things I love, um, you know, going through <clears throat> repossessions, evictions, a 17 year run, just, uh, you know, with alcohol, drug addiction. And then in a matter of just, uh, just a year or two, you're about to go into Penn state and, and, and just completely transform your life. So tell us a little bit about that, Amanda. Matt, I was doing some reflecting just the other day. So May seems to be like the year that my life changes. So May in 2015, I was strung out on meth. And that's Mother's Day was the day I decided I had to make a change, right? Mm -hmm. So May 2015, I packed up and moved down to Florida and trying to search for a better life. It didn't work out at first. So I had to make some adjustments. And yeah. then May 2016 is when I got evicted. Mm. And now May 2017, I'm starting Penn State. And I'm just like, <laughs> wow, so Crazy. much has changed. You know, it, Penn State's by far my, my biggest accomplishment so far. I'm super proud of myself, you know. It's huge. You should be. I mean, that's like, that's... That's huge. I never wanted to go to college, you know, and I, Florida State was my dream school, not even Penn State, but the opportunity came. I got, I applied, got accepted within a matter of two weeks, and now here we are. Wow. Start. I'm, I'm a lion. Yeah, it's almost like, a, I was going to say like a new life, and I guess in a sense it is, but definitely a new chapter in your life. Um, what was what was life like before? Like, you know, I know you have a daughter too, right? Don't you have a daughter? Yeah. I got a 15 year old daughter. Yeah. 15 year old daughter. So I just want to say this real quick too, for those out there listening. Um, I think Amanda is a great example of number one, not, not giving up. Um, and number two, we're all at different points in our lives, no matter what age we are, no matter what our past is. And so even living this previous life, having a daughter, um, who's, who's now 15, been through a lot of things. And, and now, um, you know, maybe like traditionally people would say, well, wait a minute, that's a little backwards. Aren't you supposed to go to college and then have a daughter? And then, then she, but it doesn't matter. See, cause we're all on our own path and you know, you're a great example of that. Like you can really do anything once you, uh, once you put your mind to it. So, um, congrats on that. Number one. And, uh, Thank you. Yes, Thank it's you. so awesome. It's very inspiring. Um, take us back, though. Like, what what was life like um, before? Um, you know, uh, before it is before the the good things that are starting to happen today. Well, I started drinking whenever I was sixteen. So I started at a very young age in high school, and I had my daughter when I was nineteen. And whenever I had her. I was the one, I was the big party girl, you know, I did yeah. not want to get married and I did not want to have kids. And because I got drunk one night at a party in Tallahassee, trying to go to Florida state, I got blessed. I like to say I got blessed <laughs> with my daughter, <laughs> you know, and whenever I had her, I was like, uh, and you said you were, 19? you were 19, you were 19. Do you know that you look yeah. like you're 19? No offense, right there. I mean, <laughs> I mean you. that like with the utmost respect. But yeah, I was cracking up because I saw a picture of of you and your daughter on Facebook. I'm like, dude, it looks like her sister. Like, what what's going <laughs> right? on? Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. We get that all the time. I think I'm gonna find some kind of mother daughter contest or something. Somewhere. I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get that. I, hey, 
after all that I've been through and all, you know, all the damage I've done to my body, I really, really do thank God every day. I'm like, thank you for restoring or, or <laughs> yeah. keeping my youth. Like, I don't even know how to express it, but I'm yeah. very grateful. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's awesome. So we, uh, you know, I was living in Mississippi and, um, just, I always knew I didn't want to be there. You know, I, something inside me knew for a long time that I didn't belong there. I just didn't really know how to express it because I wasn't around the right people that were dreamers, you know? Yeah. And, um, so I, I was trying to please a lot of people and in doing that, I was making myself miserable. So because I was miserable, I was trying to find an outlet to, to make myself happy yeah. and that was by party and then that that just turned it was cool and fun all at first this is what i tell young kids you know it's really it, you think you seem cool but i promise you like five years down the road you're gonna wake up and everybody else because a lot of people can just drink and it's okay but it's those of us that are trying to cover up the pain of something or for me like especially i was I was trying to feel loved, you know, yeah. and I, I relate a lot of my addiction to like being in a relationship and it was a very abusive, uh, just Self-destructive. nasty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just bad. And, uh, so the last 17 years I battled this in the last eight or nine months, Right after I got, I, I got a felony back in 2014 because I embezzled money to feed my addiction. I was on meth at this time. And my daughter, she got, she got fed up with it and moved in with my dad. And it was only supposed to, st- she was supposed to stay there for like two or three weeks. And that turned into eight or nine months. Oh, wow. And I'm like, you know what? I, I raised this kid by myself for a long time since she was six months old because her dad didn't want anything to do with her. And that was a lot of the pain I was trying to cover up. You know, it, yeah. it's very heartbreaking having to raise a kid by yourself and the, the father doesn't want anything to do with it. And yeah. that's definitely not the road I thought I was going to take. But so well, when it's got to be she, hard for your, for your daughter too, you know what I mean? Like to yeah. have to deal with that. I mean, that's like the whole, so not only are you dealing with, um, you know, the life struggles of trying to raise, you know, raise a child on your own. You're also having to deal with the fact that her dad's not there. And how do you, how do you, you know, give her what she needs to, uh, to, to kind of respond positively in some sort of manner to that, you know, right. You, you literally have to be mom and dad. You have to mow the grass. You have to wash the dishes. You got to wash the clothes. Like it's a lot, literally like, I try to try to make a post about it on Facebook. I'm like, wow, I can't even list all the hats that us single moms have to wear, you know. Yeah. So props to all y'all single moms. You're doing amazing. Keep keep at it, even yeah, if you don't sure. see results. Please keep at it. Sorry, I just pictured so, you mowing the lawn in like some Wranglers with like a Copenhagen in your mouth for a minute, <laughs> right? <laughs> Trying to play dad for a day, you know? <laughs> right. I promise you, like it's it's crazy, like. I don't even know some of the, I, I babysat for one of my dear friends. They got a two and three year old and I'm like, man, how did I do this? I don't even know <laughs> yeah. how I did it, it's crazy. but I did it somehow, you know? And so mother's day in 2015, she came, we were supposed to hang out, but dude, I was like, I had been evicted. This was my first eviction was in Mississippi, but mm-hmm. I kind of justified it because I was spending all my money on meth and drugs and alcohol, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I could see how I got this one, you know, um, she, she came over and threw the present on the floor because I was wallowing in my own pity in my bed. Mm. Like, I, I was like, you don't love me anymore. I can't believe like just, you know, blaming all my problems on the world. Yeah. And, yeah. She was like, nope, I'm done. I'm leaving. Bye. And she left and slammed the door. And I was like, I was mad at first. Like, really? You can't spend Mother's Day with me on all days? But then I was like, man, I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. Yeah. <laughs> because I I wasn't present, you know, and I couldn't believe, like, I, 
the shame I felt in that moment was just overbearing. So three days after that, I packed up and moved to Florida. And man, I just been getting this thing, learning as I go, you know, I had no idea. I didn't have a place to live or a job lined up, but I just went and had, and I knew I had to get away. But, but the key is if you move away, you cannot attract the same kind of people, you know? And I did that at first, but once I was aware of it, you know? Yeah. So talk, talk about that a little bit. I think that's a really important point because, um, you know, I, I have heard that a lot of, of, um, of just, you know, the, the strategic relocation effect, right. Where you try to try to just get away, but you're right. If you're not changing your yourself, if you're not changing yourself from the inside out and surrounding yourself with positive people and getting in a program or getting some help, um, you're going to attract the same type of people. You're going to end up in the same type of places. So like once you move, um, you know, maybe talk a little bit about, how and why you started attracting those, those same types of people. And then what changed for you? How did you, how did you kind of realize that? Um, and then, and then what did you start doing to change that? So I think it's just because you don't know what you don't know. Like for me, I I was so used to hanging out with these type of people, not that they're not bad people, right? They're just not on the path that I wanted to go. So some, some they of them just, are bad people, <laughs> at well, least yeah, the ones and, I hung out with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I, I, I got think, you though. I got you. I think underlie. I, maybe bad the is the, maybe was, bad is the wrong word. Like just maybe <laughs> we're all kind of lost, and that's you know I I, I yeah I, totally, I get it yeah yeah. I mean, I was a bad person for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But deep down, I was a good person. So I try not to judge them. I think for that sure. they just don't have any ambition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Or maybe it's just they haven't hit that rock bottom to where they want to change. But literally, what I came from, hanging out with people that don't want to go to work, they don't have cars when they're 40 years old, like, they're literally just making money to party. That was the kind of people I was hanging out with. And that's... I'm doing a lot of research on this laws of attraction and I, I'm very intrigued. I'm so intrigued by it, but you know, what you put out, you get back. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, that's what I was putting out because I didn't know any better. And I immediately, it's like a magnet. You, yeah. what you are, you attract. So I, I just got around the same crowd and the one the day that changed me, I had gone to a birthday party and I, I stayed away from liquor for a long time. A beer was my man, you know, me and Coors Light, that was my homie. <laughs> <laughs> but this night, for whatever reason, I got coked up and I was like, oh, I want some vodka. I'm like, I already knew I should have stayed away from the vodka, but. I had gone over, it's a neighboring city, Clearwater, Florida. I had gone over there to a birthday party. I drove myself over there and somehow I ended up, when I came, I blacked out because I was Mm. drinking liquor. And as soon as I came to, I was standing on the street corner by myself in the same city that I lived in. So it was probably a good 20, 30 minutes away. I'm like, I didn't know how I got there. Wow. I didn't know, like, why am I by myself? I know I didn't drive my car. I hope I didn't drive my car, you know, but I was scared for the first time in my life. And I've been through a lot of stuff. I've been held to gunpoint. You know, I've been through a lot of stuff. But for the first time, I was literally scared for my life. I was like, you know what, girl? You moved down here to get away from this. Why are you still doing this? You know, so... That was the last night I drank because immediately my daughter popped up in my head. She's my why. I discovered what what that is. Like she is the reason I take a breath every day. And if I want to have any chance of living a good life, I had to stop drinking and I had to stop hanging out with these people. So I literally became a hermit for just a little bit because I had to. I had to get myself back to my center, as I call it now. At that time, I didn't know what it was about, but 
I just had to start learning myself. And I'm writing a book right now, and it's listing all these steps that um, that I did at first. And once I once I spent time by myself, and that was terrifying too. I ain't yeah, gonna lie, it's so terrifying. When you, you know you're used to being at parties with people, or always having somebody to drink with, or you know, yeah. and now you don't have alcohol and you don't have all these people. I'm like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, just talk to this wall for a little bit. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> hey, or, <that's> what... <laughs> or you can or you can talk to God, right? I mean, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I did that a lot, and yeah. I started listening to uh, personal development videos on mm-hmm. YouTube, and it seemed as if what they were saying in these videos were just hitting me in the heart and. Once I finally got to where I could hang out by myself, and it wasn't an overnight process. I mean, yeah. it took it took some time, you know. But then I started list. I, I was like, all right, I can't be a hermit for the rest of my life. So, how am I going to find new people? And I was scared to death because when you're, when I was in my addiction, people always told me you're worthless. You're not going to amount to anything. Mm. I was not voted most likely to succeed by any means. <laughs> you know that Miranda Lambert song, Famous in a Small Town? That was me, but I was not oh. famous in a good way. Got it. You know, Infamous, I made huh? the <laughs> I made the news and everything, you know, but Well let me let me I, let me back let me back you up real quick because you said something uh a minute or two ago um that I want you to kind of touch on real quick. And is when you were talking about being alone, right? And not and you not knowing yourself. So when we're when we're in that state of um, of of really relying on alcohol or drugs as that tool to kind of help us escape reality or cope with any of our um, you know past or our present moment, maybe we don't really know who we are. And let me speak for myself. I know I didn't know who I was like as a man, as a dad, as a husband, um, just as a person. I just felt really, really lost. And after after I kind of um, you know the light bulb, I guess, in a sense went off and I decided that I didn't want to live like this anymore. Um, part of that process was number one, defrosting my brain as I kind of rec- uh, like to call it. And then number two, starting to learn who I was. And that meant, um, you know, getting, getting deep in within myself and talking about things. So you kind of touched on that when you were saying you're alone, um, that transition process, like you said, it's not easy sometimes. So how did you kind of, how did, like, what was your moment where you kind of came, came to, at that, at that time and just said like, man, I'm, I'm lost. And like, I don't, I don't really know who I am, but I want to know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just listening to these personal development videos, like, uh, Eric Thomas is my personal mentor. Yeah, he's awesome. And yeah, dude, he, it was just, I started listening to him on YouTube and now I'm actually, I'm working with him, you know, and he, he actually helped me pick my classes for Penn state. It's so crazy yeah, because awesome. I was just like, I want to meet this man. But anyways, what's that you know, one video? The, the first video I saw of his, and I know it's, it's probably one of his most, most, um, best known ones. I think, um, is the, the story about the, the man who the, took him out the, in the guru water, story. the guru story. That one just, yeah. That is just if. Uh, do you remember what that's called? I'll, I'll have to find. That. I'll put in the show notes because it's it's amazing. Secrets to success. Um, I think that's the official title. I'm not mm-hmm. sure of the exact title, but I can yeah. send it to you for sure. Yeah, 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 it. That's one of the first ones I listened to as well. I heard him on a uh, one of those videos that had like Les Brown and a few oh, others yeah. on there, but his voice stuck out to me. So I I and this is going just got yeah. passion man that man yeah if for those out there listening if you're not familiar with eric thomas uh real quick since we're on the on the topic yeah great dude like soup probably what would you say probably one of the top top three top or maybe top, top I, who knows yeah. he might be number one at this point he's been crushing he's, it, I know, he's but, number one in my eyes yeah, you yeah know? there you go <laughs> <laughs> anyways i'm sorry we kind of got off topic there but uh so so you've been You've been doing um, the personal development and um, you're kind of in that moment and starting to kind of open up and, and wake up a bit. Yeah, I, I never heard of it before, you know, and I but something something about it, they would like especially Eric Thomas, like in his videos, he'll give you little action steps to do. I'm like, 
all right, let me check this thing out, you know? And I think um, one of the earlier ones I heard was, if money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing right now? So that qu- I didn't want to do it at first, right? That little activity, they say, write it down. Um, because when you write things down, it, it's something magical happens. But I was like, bro, I ain't got no money. Like, this ain't even going to help me. I was so anti doing it because of the environment that I came from and I was so closed minded, but I couldn't keep quit thinking about it. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to sit down here and I'm going to write this question out. And in my alone time, this is how I started to learn myself because even a simple little exercise like that, if money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing? And I wrote down, redneck workout i wrote down i'm gonna own a a chevy truck one day and i just started writing these things and i was like wow this is kind of fun so it's kind of like a wish list you know what i mean yeah (laughs) so that's how i started opening up and started learning what i love doing again and when i was ready to reach out to new people something I don't it was weird because it was just a single thought like years ago I had wanted to do mud runs and I never thought about it after that it was one time I was like oh that'd be fun but it that memory popped up in my head and I was like hmm all right well I will search for people in Tampa Bay and see if there's anybody that wants to do one with me, you know, and come to find out it's like really popular down here. Mm. So I reached out to some people and it's really, really, really scary at first to reach out to new people. But the good news is they don't know your past. They don't know where you've been, what you've been through unless you tell them, you know? Yeah. And it's not like I was trying to hide anything, but I was like, I've been called worthless for so long. I didn't want to go meet new people and they're, and they judge me, you know? Yeah. 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 For sure. Like I, I open up and I'm pretty vocal with my story because I, I have high hopes that somebody's going to be able to connect at some point, you know, like at the restaurant I work at. Man, anybody that will listen, I'm going to give them a piece of my story, you know, just because I think that we, as humans, we can all connect in some way, you know, and just because I went through addiction, I may have experienced something that this person that has cancer gone through, we may have had one common thing and we can connect, you know? So that, that's how I, I view sharing my story. You know, I'm not, I was ashamed at first, like, you know, I've done so much dumb stuff. Like we all have so much. Yeah, And and, well, like you said, and if you're not open with it, you might miss that opportunity that, that may be able to help somebody, you know, and I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a firm believer that, God puts people in our lives or moments in our lives for a reason. And if we're not in tune enough, you know, spiritually to act on those, then we might miss that opportunity that could really save somebody a lot of grief one day could just make their day better. It could save their life. You you know, you never know. Um, do you you find when, do you find when talking to a lot of people too, that, um, even if it's not them directly, most people, um, you know, have a connection to some sort of addiction or alcoholism or something. Oh, my brother. Oh, my, you know, my my son, you know, struggled with it. So, I mean, I always find that too. And like, that's why I think it's important that we, that we really speak out about it. It man, probably 95% of the, the people that I've shared my story, I'm just thinking about my customers at the restaurant right now in this moment. And 95% of them are like, Oh yeah, my son just went through a rehab center. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. So they can relate already. You you you're connecting with people and they but the the beautiful thing, I remember this couple that came in um and their son has been battling this thing for a while and the mom like I could see the the worn out tiredness in her eyes like I'm like 
my, don't give up. Like I'm living proof that anything and everything is possible. And, and though I wasn't speaking directly to an addict, I was speaking to his mom yeah. and encouraging his mom, you know, because she, she was just, just like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to quit. You know, I'm yeah. tired of this thing. So it's amazing. Like, and I was just thinking, what if I hadn't even shared anything with her and she would have left that place in the same state, you know? Yeah. And I only hope that I could, I know I brought a smile to her face cause I saw it, but <laughs> I only hope that yeah. she went out of there and just left empowered, you know, that that's, yeah. that's the whole thing about it. So yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, talk, so talk about one, one of the things, uh, one of the things I love too in, in, in your, your journey is that, um, is the fire, I guess, I guess that's the way I put it. And, you know, you're definitely motivated and hungry. Hungry is a great word. Like I, you, you want it. That's very obvious. Um, you're working 12 hour days, straight hustling, you know, in, enrolled in school, like, you know, um, helping other people, like doing all the stuff, like. So to go from being, you know, um, um, addicted and in that lifestyle and then just in a year and a half kind of flipping the script, um, like talk to the people listening out there right now that it, like what it takes just to just to get going and to get motivated and to um, like how how you're able to do it. It's crazy. Like I've always been an all or nothing kind of person. Like I ran my life into the ground an addiction and now I'm taking all that energy I guess or or whatever you call it and putting it towards the good yeah. you know but I can't I don't even start my day without uh talking to God I have um the daily motivation I do I have to get myself in in the right space before I can even think about pouring into others. And that's so important. You know, mm. you have to take care of yourself first, first. So whenever, whenever I got a taste of this good life, like it, it doesn't mean that you're not going to face stuff or face bad days. I have bad days too, just like everybody else. But I try to put my mind in, in a grateful perspective where if I'm having a bad day, I'm like, you know what? It's okay because I'm still alive. I woke yeah. up today and that's a miracle in itself considering what all I've been through, you know? So, you know. So, gra all, gra but a very, a very, um, uh, what do you call it? Attitude of gratitude, basically. When we're taking yes. that, when we're taking that, you know, that gratitude daily. And I think I, I've talked about this even in just a recent, uh, recent episode, but um, someone had sent it to me in an email and I thought it was great. It's uh, keep your, keep your uh, gratitude higher than your expectations. And when I'm yeah. able to do that, man, it's huge. Like, just like you're talking about waking up, you know, showing gratitude just for breathing today. Like life is short. We don't know when that car is going to be pulled, you know? So why not live right? it out? And like to, to your uh, point in, in your bio, let's be happy. Like, let's just be happy. You know what I mean? But we're going to have bad days too. Right. So it's about dealing yeah. with those too. There's bad. I mean, I get frustrated still. I cry still, but at the, I don't, the, the thing is like, it's okay to feel those emotions. Yeah. You feel, you know, but don't stay there. Don't let it, don't let it take a hold of your life for days and then yeah. weeks and then yeah. months. Like, no, it's, grab it, feel it and then let it go, you know? And then immediately, like, I promise you, so last year, whenever I lived in the hotel for two months, the end, the last two weeks I was there, I knew some big changes were coming because the last two weeks, the hot water did not work. So mm -hmm. I would work these long hours at the restaurant and come home to, or come to the hotel for a cold shower. And man, I just cried. I was so like, really, God, really? Come on, man, yeah. you know? But then I was like, I just had to thank you, God, for even letting me have a shower. Even though it's cold, mm. I do appreciate it. You know, like, it's just changing the smallest little bit of change to your mindset can make you the happiest person. And well, I'm just a firm, a firm believer that you've got to be happy. You know, you have to. 
When, and I think, too, you, you're stepping out of that victim mentality. And that's a huge yeah. thing. And the, the victim mentality can can really just work wonders on a person. You know, I, I know uh, I know for, for me, many years, it was the victim mentality. And it, could, it didn't matter if it was, you know, uh, someone I, I loved, um, a stranger, a workplace. Like, it didn't matter. Like, I, I was the victim. And yeah. the shift between taking the victim mentality and shifting that over into... Um, and a, a mentality of gratitude and opportunist, I guess, or being an opportunist and looking at everything through the perspective of how how can this shitty situation be an opportunity to me? Yeah, um, and it's hard to do. I'm not saying it's you just wake up and hey, everything's great. Like it is not an easy thing to do. You, you got to train like anything. Like just like lifting weights, you're not going to get strong in a day. You know, you're constantly doing, um, you're constantly running that program, and you get better and better and better at it. Like anything, um, I guess that kind of leads into, leads us into this for for you. Um, what, what does your program look like today? What, what are the things that you're doing? What can you share, uh, especially with other women out there? Um, you know, it's, it's, I know it's tough for everybody and it's, it's, um, you know, maybe, maybe there's something specific that you do that you could help, uh, help share with anyone listening. So especially for the moms, man, I've said it again. I'll say it again. Shout out to you. I promise you, even on the days where your kids are like, getting on your nerves or not minding you or you just feel tired, man, give yourself a hug because you're doing amazing. So I, I work out like that. That's the gap that I I found when I went to rehab years ago, I went through an AA rehab, you know, and there, there was a lady that was supposed to come do Zumba, but she didn't show up. But the one time she did, man, I felt so alive. Like mm. there's something, I ain't no scientist or anything, but there's something about when you work out, it does something to your endorphins and it just, it makes you feel better. I, I hate working out. I hate the process, but I love the way it makes me feel, yeah. you know, so I, I work my mind, my body, and my soul every single day, even if it's just a walk around the block, something as little as that and just observing nature really, really, really helps me keep my sanity, helps me keep centered, helps me be peaceful. Yeah. So I do the daily motivation. I do a, a devotion every day. I do some sort of fitness, either it's my red net workouts or a run. And then for the soul, for the soul, I go make strangers smile, like making awesome. somebody else's day. It, it does. It, I think it does more for me than it does for them. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. you know, that's awesome. All right. So tell, tell us, tell us about the redneck workout. Uh, I, I know, I know folks are uh, interested in that. You got some, some videos that are great on there and uh, tell us kind of how you, how you started that, um, a little bit about it. And then, uh, we'll, we'll bring this thing full circle and wrap this up today, Amanda. All right. So whenever it was years ago, I was drunk as Cooter Brown <laughs> and <laughs> we had thrown we were throwing the football out in the yard and it got stuck up in the tree and I tried to climb the tree and I don't know how why I said it I was like you know what I'm gonna make a redneck workout <laughs> so I started thinking of ideas back when I was drinking and the I took a sledgehammer to a tree and like tore my shoulder muscle so that wasn't a smart idea <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound like much fun. So I've always wanted to do it, right? But yeah. uh, I knew I couldn't go to that extent. So the whole idea behind the Redneck Workout is you have everything you need at home to do some sort of physical activity. It definitely is not for trying to lose weight. It's not trying to tone up. It's not trying to do anything except introduce you into – the fitness world and bring joy and laughter yeah, to you. Fun. So I love it. Yes. Because yeah. a lot of people think that working out is so serious. And since I hate working out, I had to make it fun. So yeah. I literally can tell you, <laughs> I show you in my videos how you can take two milk jugs 
and an old broom handle and some duct tape, and you can make a jug <laughs> bar. And then I've, I've, I've used a plunger and two Walmart sacks with some water bottles in it to make some little weight, some homemade weight. So literally, I'm very innovative, and I, I'm like, I would rather work out with the milk jugs than go to the gym and lift some weight. So it, it makes and me du- laugh. And duct tape will, will fix anything. I had a buddy yes, and yes. his grandma used to <laughs> duct tape her hip. And we would always crack up because oh grandma gosh. fixed herself by duct tape. I don't know if that story is a myth or what, but he used to talk about it often. We used to crack up. So oh you my gosh. Got I it going it. down. And I love, you know, that, that's what it's about is you're right. It's having some fun, um, you know, f- feeling that genuine joy, being a little bit goofy and, and just uh, enjoying, enjoying each day. So that's, that's uh, super, super cool. I think, you know, whenever, real quick, whenever I left the rehab center, like, I felt like my life had to be so serious, yeah. you know, because yeah. they, they didn't really express that you could have fun and and be sober and live a happy life and actually smile at yourself. Like, I thought I was about to go to some boring life, and that's how I felt, and so that's what was. But yeah. this, this go-around, I'm like, no, I'm not doing things the same way. I'm going to have fun, dadgummit. I'm going to I'm going to love life because if I'm not going to love life when I'm sober then what's the point of being sober? Right? Then I'll just go back to using. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah. So what's uh let, let's uh, la- last question here. Um if you can give, you know, one piece of advice to to someone out there struggling uh who's going through it who wants to uh not only get clean and sober but change and learn about themselves and and start on a path um you know to a better life. Uh, what could you tell them, Amanda? I this this changed my life. My mentor told me, he said, everything you go through is not about you. Mm. So that I, I interpreted that as there's a reason that I went through all this stuff. And whenever you take the focus off of you and you realize that I'm going to be able to help somebody because I went through this, because I can show compassion on a deeper level that just changed my life and opened my perspective up so much. Don't, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Um, but if you want it, you can have it. You you can do it because I did it. And everybody counted me out. Mm. Everybody said that I was never going to make anything out of myself and now I'm a college student at Penn State at 35 years old, and I'm freaking awesome. proud of it. And <laughs> just don't give up. Even on the days you, you feel like quitting, don't. Please don't, because you are worth it, and you're amazing, and you deserve happiness just like everybody else. Amanda, if anyone wants to reach out to you, they want to find more about the Redneck Workouts, they want to find more about Patched Wings, where can they go? So they can go to my website at patchwangs.com and that's W-A-N-G-S because I had to make it country slang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my email is Amanda at patchwangs.com. Amanda, thanks so much for coming on Sober Guy Radio today. It's been great. It's been uh, it's been really cool to, to talk to you. I mean, we've talked a little bit inside and outside or inside the groups and stuff, but um, great to hear from you. Congrats on uh, on on this journey too. Like, I can't believe that it's in, in such a short period of time too. You've been able to just to flip it, and now you're about to go into Penn State. So uh, much love to you, respect, and uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate you and all you do, Shane. Thanks for tuning in today. For more information on how you can help support us or get more resources, go to thatsoberguy.com. Peace, love, respect.